All right, guys, so let's talk about a few pieces or EDC items that I, as a survivalist, prioritize carrying. So first up, one of the most important things I would say that most people don't like talking about, but is very nifty in most applications, including in some survival applications, is a phone. I think, you know, some people, they definitely don't love technology, and there's nothing wrong with being, you know, semi-anti-technology, but undoubtedly, things like a phone are a modern day multi-tool. They allow you to do a lot of things. And I can't sit here and say, you know, you should carry a multi-tool without also conversely saying that you should carry a digital or technological multi-tool as well. And undoubtedly, that is realistically what a phone is. So first off, I'd say a phone is probably one of the biggest survival um, tools, I guess you could say, uh, just because of its capacity to do everything. Now, another really good survival tool, in my opinion, and one that's pretty dang hard to go wrong with, is a really solid knife. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be the toughest knife out there, but you know, having something that is practical and something that you can use for a wide variety of tasks, from you know opening uh, you know boxes and maybe you know bags of chips, to you know making some feather sticks and some light outdoor use, in case you get yourself in a bind or a pinch is important and I would always factor you know you know where you're going where you plan to be and to try to factor a knife appropriately for that. Now another thing that I think coincides with this as a realistic survival tool is a firearm and this is usually going to be something that's a little bit more uh, at least in times like this a little bit more urban a little bit more you know, practical for self-defense, but a firearm that is going to match your according environment. And make no mistakes too, a lot of people might sit there and say, you know, like, oh, a Glock 19, that would be a terrible survival firearm. But I will tell you this, I have actually hunted and shot grouse with a Glock 19, not this one in particular, but my last, my previous Glock 19, um, the one that I had before this, that was also a Gen 4. Um, I did actually shoot grouse with it. And once again, I'm not gonna say it's the most, um, um, practical hunting firearm obviously you know a 22 is going to cause less meat damage but if you in a pinch need to you know shoot a grouse or a small game animal for hunting no doubts something like a nine mil will actually do it so anyways um Back onto the topic, another one that is very important to go over the bases is a lighter. As I struggle to get mine out of my pocket, um, a really basic lighter like this, like a Zippo, um, or what I would say if you don't wanna carry or can't carry a lighter specifically, um, I would say a ferrocerium rod is also a really good option because ferro rods legitimately weigh nothing, like they're just a thin piece of metal. And of course you can get different sizes, different thicknesses, different lengths. Uh, to fit your applications, but a ferrocerium rod, so long as you practice with it, is a really good alternative to a lighter. However, either or or both is something that I always carry, and it is a very nifty, handy tool to have in a pen. So next to the lighter, I think another thing that's very important to carry is a flashlight. And once again, you know, sometimes in like environments like right now, I guess you could say like in Alaska, it's not really getting dark. However, there are still dark areas, of course, like let's say you find yourself in a cave or needing to go into a dark area, like being able to have a flashlight to just, you know, illuminate something is nifty, right? Um, of course, the, there are times of the year where it's mostly dark in Alaska, so having a flashlight is very nifty then. But a flashlight is something that, once again, I think it's very similar to a lot of the gear that I'm talking about here, and that is it doesn't take a lot of weight, it doesn't take a lot of space um, or real estate even in your pockets, and it's just a nifty tool to have. You may not use one every day, and I know I don't use a flashlight every single day myself, but there are enough occasions to warrant its use and, uh, yeah, to have it. Okay, next one up in the last of the essentials, what I would say is going to be a pen or an, and or a marker, uh, depending once again on what's more important or applicable to your situation. But being able to write or leave messages, leave notes uh, is a huge deal. And so having something like a pen on you is really important. And uh, it definitely has a lot of applications, not so much to direct survival, but if you need to leave notes, you do. if you need to be able to write on something, 
having something like a pen or a pencil or a marker can be really important. Okay, the last two up that I would say is firstly a multi-tool, something that's going to be plier-based preferably. Uh, in this case, mine's a particular like um, charge uh, plus from Leatherman, but just having a plier based multi tool is super, super handy because the amount of things you can do out in the wilderness with a multi tool is undeniably extremely high. And really, about the only thing that stops you is your imagination. Last one up is going to be. Last one up is going to be a watch. Now, a manual watch is probably a preference here, but whether it's a smart watch or a manual watch, um, having a watch of sorts is very important, obviously, because it helps you keep track of your timing. And in certain times of the year, it's more important than others. Like here, you know, uh, you don't really have to worry about daylight in the summer because there's always enough daylight to see outside. But um, in certain times of the year, that's not always the case. Certain parts of the world, that's not always the case. So that's handy to know as well. Um, just overall watches are something that, once again, very similar to a lot of these, you know, pieces of tool or pieces of kit. Like it's something that you can, you know, carry on you and it doesn't, like the value outweighs, like what it's good for and its value outweighs the weight and the bulk of it. So anyways, guys, that is a look at things that, I carry as a survivalist and things that I think are priorities for everyday carry. Anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And as always, don't forget to leave some feedback in the comment section below. God bless, and I'm out.